Good evening, friends, and welcome to another episode of Crossing Boundaries. We are on session four, and I'm Dr. Vidya Hari Ayer from Dr. Vidya's Smile Dental Clinic, the director and founder. I'm sure uh, each of the topics that we have been uh, choosing for each one of you must have made an impact and answered a few of your queries, especially uh, in your dental care and uh, hygiene concerns. And today we have come with another topic called Dental Caries and its Treatment Plan. So uh, with no further ado, I'm going to start sharing my presentation and uh, then you'll be able to see what we are in store for you. Okay, so... Our session for today is going to be on dental caries and its treatment. Dental caries or cavities or generally what people call as a tooth decay is caused because of the breakdown of tooth enamel. If you look at this uh, picture which is seen, you will see the crown portion or the portion which is visible in your oral cavity. When you say E, you see a white portion of your teeth that is called the crown and then which is embedded in your bone is called the root. So, this breakdown of the outer surface of your tooth, which is the enamel and uh, the bacteria which uh, fall on the enamel and the breakdown of the bacteria on the teeth actually uh, causes the dental caries. And how this happens, we're going to talk about it. We have what we call the dental triad or the caries triad. So the first is the tooth, which forms a part of the triad. The age of the tooth, the fluoride content on the tooth, the morphology of the tooth, the nutrition when the tooth was forming, the trace elements and the carbonate level actually decide the strength of the enamel. The flora is nothing but the microbes which is there in your oral cavity and streptococcus mutans is that microorganism which causes the dental caries. Oral hygiene which means brushing twice daily and fluoride in plaque is also very important. Substrate, when I talk about that, that is a food particle which is on the tooth. So that if you look at it, the oral clearance which happens with your saliva. Your saliva is a liquid in your oral cavity actually which flushes out the food particles. Proper oral hygiene maintenance and frequency of eating. If you keep munching through the day, your uh, DKK or your caries will be much more. And of course, the carbohydrate, the content the type and the concentration, all this would be there, which will influence the aspect of the dental caries. So when does this dental caries occur? When you have food on the tooth along with the microbia and that is when the dental caries occurs. So what are the causes of caries if you ask? It is the low content of the minerals, either in the drinking water, it could be fluoride, phosphorus or calcium improper oral hygiene, hereditary, impaired tooth formation, poor nutrition, gastrointestinal diseases and decreased immunity along with hypovitaminosis which means less amount of vitamins as the tooth is growing and that's what causes dental caries. Streptococcus mutants is the main cause of the dental caries. I told you that, right? And how does this caries precipitate if you see on the surface of the tooth? You can have it on the top called the pit and fissure caries. It could be between two teeth called the smooth surface caries. And once your gums actually recede, you would have something called the root caries also. Now, the dental caries or the dental decay as we call it, actually what happens is I told you, you have the bacteria or the germs on the tooth and then the food substrate. All this together forms an acid. And this acid over the healthy tooth over a longer period of time causes cavities. There are different types of dental caries. We will go through each one of them. Enamel caries basically means when caries is only on the outer surface, which is the enamel. Acute caries means suddenly there's an onset of caries and immediately it goes on. Secondary caries is after getting a tooth filling. Your caries action has not stopped. It is still propagating beneath the filling. That is secondary caries. Arrested caries would be seen as a black area on the tooth. And early childhood caries is when the children, early children, uh, when they, uh, you know, have this caries. When we classify caries, we classify into uh, the cavity preparations which we form along with the cavities. 
So we could have it either on the surface of the tooth or in the back surface of the teeth, especially in the anterior teeth or the front teeth. You could have it between the teeth, that is class two. When the, when the uh, decay happens between the front teeth, it is called class three. When it is uh, happening on the surface where it uh, knocks off uh, even the incisal edge or the sharp line. So that is class four. When it is occurring on the neck of the tooth, it is class five and class six is in any other areas other than what has been mentioned before. So based on chronology, basically means chronology is the age. So early childhood caries means very early in child uh, when the children start getting caries. Nursing bottle is between this one to three years when the children are still having their bottle drink. Now, when they have their bottle drink, what happens is the lower teeth get protected and the upper teeth only get affected. That's also because the saliva is there on the lower teeth, which actually cleans and the tongue also protects it to a larger extent. Rampant caries is when the spread of the dental caries is very high. Adolescent caries is when it happens in a little more adulthood, especially due, due to, you know, improper maintenance of the teeth and also due to food changes. Mostly they start taking uh, uh, aerated drinks or they start, you know, having indulging in a lot of uh, zero calorie food or high calorie and zero, zero nutrient value food. Then you have the adult caries where it occurs on the neck of the tooth. So let's look at them with some pictures for you to understand them better. You can see on the top, they are the normal, healthy primary teeth. And then you have these chalky white substances on your tooth. You will see they are hypomineralized. Hypo means less. Mineral means the uh, mineral content which you need in your uh, teeth. They are the calcium, the phosphorus, uh, the fluoride, all of which is very important. And uh, brown spots occurs when this hypomineralized areas are again removed. And then severe caries is when there is a breakdown of the tooth structure. And uh, the patients will start having sensitivity. Sometimes it will result in pain also. Now, here is a picture where you can see of the, uh, you know, nursing bottle uh, caries where you can see the upper teeth are all affected. And uh, it really uh, is a kind of uh, emotional quotient for this child will be very low, especially the child will not see, uh, feel very comfortable even smiling in front of others because they know that their teeth is not good. Uh, this is rampant caries. Now, in rampant caries, what basically happens is many surfaces of the teeth are affected. It is not only one surface. You will see on the uh, top area between the teeth and the gums, on the teeth itself. And the spread is very wide. And uh, you will see uh, really uh, uh, people here would uh, have a lot of pain. And they would have avoided a uh, certain kind of foodstuffs also. They would say uh, it is sensitive to, uh, you know, soft uh, diet. Uh, they don't want to eat anything like which is spicy, uh, nothing which is, uh, you know, sweet. Some people even say they don't want to eat anything which is tangy, like lime or anything they don't want to eat because it really hurts them. And uh, so their uh, diet itself will be a very modified diet. And uh, mostly when they modify their diet, their uh, nutrient content actually becomes even more less. Next is what we call as a pit and fissure caries, which is seen on the surface of the tooth. You can see them. They are like a black dot or black lines on the surface of the teeth. And if you look at these lines, uh, see, you should uh, imagine an ice cream cone. Now, uh, the ice cream cone, imagine you have put it upside down where the, uh, the cone's mouth is down and the cone's tip is on the top. So when you actually see a black dot, it means the caries is much more inside. Many a times I have heard patients asking me, doctor, I just had a small dot and why is the cavity, uh, once you prepared, I'm touching it with my tongue, why is it become big? I'm sure you got the answer now, right? Because the ice cream cone, the tip only is outside, which will just be seen as a black dot, but inside the spread is a lot more. And you can see when the caries is between two teeth, so when it is between two teeth, what basically happens is you have a wide opening or the ice cream cone right now is outside and the tip is inside. So class two, which means when it occurs between the two teeth, more damage is seen outside and less damage into the tooth, which is actually good in terms of the vitality or the 
nerve uh, content of the tooth is not affected much when it becomes a class 2 in the initial phases. This picture will show you the kind of uh, the gums which has come down and cavities occurring on the surface between the tooth and the, um, the, the, uh, the tooth and the root portion of the tooth that is closer to the gums. Here, if you look at it, you are seeing kind of brownish uh, color changes. Patients would generally complain of sensitivity in these uh, regions and uh, sometimes it could also be uh, due to, uh, you know, a improper brushing. They generally go in and out and that is a wrong way of brushing. Second, what happens is people generally uh, have this if they have excessive occlusal forces, which means, you know, without their knowledge, they'll be grinding their teeth much more or... They would have some eccentric movements as in movement of the teeth and the jaw in, uh, you know, right uh, side to side movements. So you could also have something called abfractions here and that could uh, aid more of the caries content. Uh, sometimes you will see uh, such patients also complaining of uh, caries, especially uh, in this uh, neck region. Uh, due to uh, the, uh, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, habits which they have. So we need to be very careful in identifying the cause before we go ahead with the treatment modality. And here you can see this is senile caries. Senile uh, caries occurs usually about 60 years of age. And uh, here it can just get worsened. You can see a lot of blackish areas, which means the caries is active. And you will see that it can go up to the root portion of the tooth also. So in these cases, mostly when patients come, uh, you know, we say either root canal or extraction because uh, the whole idea of preservation of the tooth is when we can uh, make it functional. Functional means you must be able to eat and you must be able to talk. All the functions of the teeth should be able to be performed comfortably. If that is not going to be the case, then we will have to extract the tooth. So how do I know uh, that a tooth is decayed if I'm going to ask uh, my doctor? So very simple things are first thing is we have uh, something called the diagnodent, which a doctor generally has to diagnose the, the, you know, the dental caries or the extent of the dental caries. You can have uh, two ways of diagnosis. One is the acoustic signal, which means the sound which comes. So like if I say thud and thud, so you could see the magnitude of that voice actually changing. So the bigger the cavity, the higher would be that uh, sound. And digital display, more the number, more the decay. So that is what it is. Next is we generally take x-rays. Uh, that is the most uh, widely used uh, way of finding uh, dental caries, especially if it is not uh, visible in the oral cavity. When we look into it in observation or in examination uh, and inspection, if we are not able to see the dental caries, what we have missed out uh, by just seeing it with our eyes, we can catch it them uh, with the help of an x-ray. Usually we can take a bite wing x-ray to help us identify these kind of dental caries in the initial phases. And uh, we uh, look at the extent of the caries also. We can see whether it is only in the enamel or it has gone up to the dentine or it has moved closer to the pulp. We'll be able to see that with the help of the x-rays. So how can I prevent it? That is the next question, right? We all want to uh, prevent because all of us know that prevention is better than cure. So we could use something called a dental fluoride application. So, uh, as I told you in the beginning, uh, when there is a less of fluoride uh, in the drinking water or in the toothpaste or uh, when the tooth is actually forming, uh, the fluoride basically takes care of the uh, teeth and it can prevent dental caries. So, uh, we do something called the fluoride application uh, and we use these kind of uh, trays in which we place the fluoride content. They can be flavored uh, fluoride contents and you could, uh, you know, just keep them in your oral cavity and bite onto it. Wait for about 15 to 20 uh, minutes and then you can rinse it out and uh, be very careful of uh, not uh, eating anything uh, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, uh, let me say, carbonated in nature wherein the fluoride content can come out. Okay. And uh, this is done generally on the chair side, which means you will have to visit your dentist and only then they would do it for you. So this is not something you can take it home and do it. 
and uh, another thing is we generally use this most uh, prevalently in children so that uh, they don't get carry so we use it at intervals uh, we generally uh, do it at uh, say age when uh, the child's teeth is going to come and uh, when they are young so the absorption of this fluoride into the teeth will be much better next is something called the fluoride varnish application to me very uh, simple it's uh, something like a nail paint how you would paint your nails you can paint your teeth too and uh, that is with the fluoride varnish application so this is also done with the uh, patient coming into the dental office and uh, we apply these kind of fluoride varnishes and uh, we need to be very careful that you should not uh, brush your teeth or floss your teeth for 4 hours you should avoid eating anything which is uh, hot and uh, sticky in nature because it will uh, hamper the fluoride varnish and avoid any alcoholic beverages or uh, any mouth rinses which have alcohol also and uh, try not to take any other uh, fluoride uh, till the next day uh, probably your tooth uh, uh, paste and uh, any other fluoride mouth rinses also could be avoided and you can uh, discontinue the fluoride uh, tablets if you are taking any uh, for the 2 to 3 days also and uh, you just have to let this varnish over your teeth uh, uh, you know evaporate and uh, um, become like a thin film over the surface of the tooth and uh, this would help you in actually uh, you know uh, a kind of uh, prevention next what we need to know is uh, the pit and fissure sealant so uh, let's understand what pits are pits uh, like you would know the english language pit means any hole or any uh, you know depression on the surface so like we say pot holes right so those are like uh, pits on the surface of your tooth now these are classified into the alphabets which we generally know so you could have a type uh, Uh, kind of uh, you know a pit and fissure and uh, this u type uh, would be uh, on the surface of the tooth we can also have a v type we can have an i type uh, a ik type or a inverted y type and uh, these are there in prevalence which means it is not that it is only in textbooks we can see them in your oral cavity and uh, what we generally do is sometimes we do a procedure called enameloplasty where we try to open up these pits and fissures so they become self cleansing area especially if you look at this diagram of ik and inverted y without your knowledge uh, dental caries can spread so many a times i had patients coming and telling me doc i'm taking so much care of my teeth why am i getting dental caries again and again so you know there are some uh, uh, morphological changes on the surface of the tooth which will cause that so generally we do a procedure called enameloplasty and try to prevent it uh, mostly what happens is we try to inform the patients well in advance but uh, since the patients don't have pain or anything in this uh, stage uh, not many of them uh, accept the treatment when even the doctor suggests so this are uh, what we are going to see when you see a pit and fissure you can see the diagrams uh, numbered uh, a b c d so you will see in the first uh, picture they are not dental caries see the, uh, the the actual caries is not set in however you can see that they are potential uh, to become dental caries is very high and that is why we do these pit and fissure sealants so in uh, figure b you can see we take a small round end burr and we just uh, you know open up these grooves and then we use a, a kind of an etchant where you can see that blue color and we apply it uh, wait for about 15 uh, seconds and then we wash you will see a kind of a white chalky appearance in the figure e and then we start uh, filling in this um, kind of a, a sealant this sealant is much more flowable in nature so it will go into the deep grooves and the fissures of the tooth and then we take a a, a light uh, what the light we use is called the visible light cure this is not laser so this is the visible light cure and uh, and then we uh, uh, you know that uh, that material which we have placed in it sets and then we do polishing of their teeth we check for any high points and then the patient is good to go so this is how you can prevent now imagine you have a caries 
Then these four are the other options which you could have. You can have a composite resin as a filling material. They are white colored or the tooth colored restorations. You could also have the amalgam, which is the, uh, the silver fillings. Uh, I'm sure all of you must have heard about this silver fillings. Uh, nowadays, uh, not much of that is being used because it is uh, nephro and neurotoxin. And uh, that is why, uh, you know, uh, we don't use it much today. Next, you have the porcelain fillings. Uh, uh, that is also done. And uh, this is done especially in larger cavities. And uh, uh, the advantage of porcelain is that, you know, it is a little more long lasting in nature. And then you have the gold fillings. Now, gold fillings is the most biocompatible. When I say biocompatible, I mean they are the most tooth friendly. Uh, of course, uh, you will say that gold is expensive. I agree with that. But uh, we are not talking about, uh, you know, expensive here. We are trying to talk about being more, uh, you know, patient friendly. And uh, today I have had a lot of patients who come in only for gold fillings. I'll like, tell you why. Uh, so let's first see the silver fillings, uh, like uh, how we prepare is we prepare a tooth cavity and uh, this cavity is prepared with certain, uh, you know, specifications as the outline form, a retention form is to be done. And uh, then only we go ahead with the preparation. And once we have prepared, we try to put a base. A base is a, a kind of an insulator, which tries to insulate this uh, filling uh, from the uh, tooth. Uh, we need it especially because uh, amalgam or uh, dental amalgam or the silver filling, as we say, is a combination of metal. So we don't want any conduction of the heat or uh, whatever uh, coffee or tea which you drink. It should not give you sharp pain on your teeth. So that is why we put a insulator and the base basically acts as an insulator. You can see it in diagram B where you can see a kind of, uh, uh, you know, whitish color, which I'm just pointing it right now. And then we go ahead with the amalgam filling. So the amalgam filling, uh, once we polish it, this is how it looks. And, uh, uh, the, you know, it is uh, stood the test of time and it's a very good material. However, as I told you, because of its color and, uh, you know, other uh, complications nowadays, we don't use this silver amalgam fillings. Next is the composite resin. Uh, composite resin, as I told you before, it is a tooth colored or a white colored uh, filling material. When I say white colored friends, uh, please understand that uh, tooth is just not white. You have a spectrum of color. Uh, it is from yellowish white to grayish white. So here uh, we have two surfaces. We have the dentine and then we have the enamel. Enamel is the outermost surface. Inside is the dentine. Usually the enamel is uh, white or yellowish white in nature and the dentine is more of yellow to yellowish brown in nature. The color of it, uh, that is why the tooth color actually uh, differentiates from one uh, person to another because the thickness of the dentine and the thickness of the enamel and its combination will give you the tooth color. Now, when I look at a tooth and uh, when a patient, uh, you know, is asking for a filling, you have various options. Now, uh, when we say there are various types of fillings we do, what we try to tell you is we are trying to be as biomimetic, which means we are trying to mimic the tooth as much as possible. So uh, your doctor, when they tell you this filling costs you so much, uh, you will be wondering like, why is it this much uh, amount of money, right? So we are trying to actually uh, recreate the dentine part first and fill it up and then create the enamel part. So when we do this, uh, it actually takes a lot more time. And uh, of course, we do it under a lot of uh, specifications. There must be total isolation here and uh, once we complete the procedure you'll feel very comfortable and nobody will know you've got a filling done you will see the uh, figure d that the tooth looks so natural that nobody will know that a filling has been done so that's the advantage of the composite restorations next is the gold restoration so you can see here uh, it's a small cavity and uh, we have filled it with gold gold we can do both direct and indirect restorations direct means when we do it directly in the oral cavity uh, it does take time because we have to uh, you know compact the uh, gold uh, foil and this is uh, you know 100% uh, gold foil so which means uh, the character of uh, the gold 
we say you know 90 uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, the gold jewelry we use uh, is also not that pure because there is a little amount of uh, copper and all that added so that it becomes uh, malleable and ductile so that you know the gold uh, which is very soft in nature uh, will uh, actually need some kind of the strength otherwise all our jewelry uh, will just uh, you know uh, be uh, when you pull it gold becomes very soft so here we are using 100 percent pure gold and that is called the 24 karat gold but your jewelry is actually not 24 karat it is somewhere between 18 to 22 karat okay why do we say the carrot has reduced in the gold jewelry it is because we add some kind of immunity uh, impurities otherwise your gold uh, itself will become very soft so we are trying to harden the gold when we make jewelry so uh, i uh, you know um, um, let me uh, tell you that you know we have something called the american academy of gold foil operators and we also have the indian academy of gold foil operators and in 2017 uh, i uh, tried to update myself and go uh, abroad and complete uh, my uh, education in uh, gold foil uh, restorations and uh, I was honored by the Honorary Health Secretary of Tamil Nadu, Dr. J. Radha Krishnan sir. And uh, this is just to tell you that further I went to become a, a teacher uh, for gold foil where I started teaching other doctors because very, very, very few uh, doctors all over the world practice this uh, gold restoration. So uh, that is why uh, we need to understand that uh, these specialty treatments are uh, very important, especially when we are trying to uh, give the best uh, to our patients. And uh, this is with the batch of students, the first batch, the second batch, and the third batch of students with whom we had done the courses in India. And uh, of course, uh, my future, uh, future uh, presentations at uh, Sri Balaji Dental College and of course at Vellur branch, Indian Dental Association, where we were talking about uh, gold uh, restorations. And uh, I was uh, really being honored uh, by these uh, institutions. And I was also uh, privileged to, to be on the board, especially as a pre-conference head uh, for the World Gold uh, Restoration Summit. And uh, this is just to give you an idea about uh, that, you know, you have to have a proper training in gold restorations. Most of the questions which come to me are, uh, doctor, how long will my uh, filling uh, last? We generally don't give any guarantee because there is a lot of wear and tear, food habits, the kind of uh, uh, pressure you apply with your brush and all that. But nevertheless, a uh, composite resin will last for about seven years, a glass cyanomer. Uh, which has a little more uh, less uh, strength when compared to the composite or the amalgam or the ceramic. Uh, that lasts for only for about five years. Your amalgam restorations last for 15 years. Ceramic also lasts for 15 years and the gold uh, lasts for 15 to 30 years. Uh, I have uh, personally uh, visually seen uh, gold restorations which has lasted for more than 60 plus years. And uh, in fact, uh, sometimes... Uh, the tooth uh, can uh, fall off or that, you know, there might be extraction of the tooth, but there will be no secondary caries with the gold restorations because we generally, uh, you know, uh, sterilize the gold as we take it into the oral cavity. And so that is the best part of uh, using gold uh, foil restorations. So uh, I just uh, try to give you a kind of an understanding of the dental caries and the different types of uh, filling materials we are doing. Every month uh, we will be coming and uh, we will be uh, sharing a kind of uh, a singular topic with you all so that you will be able to understand better. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, I'm open to questions at this point of time and uh, you can definitely uh, ask uh, your questions. So, yes, any questions, you are, I'm, I'm there to answer for you. Hi, Vidya ma'am. Good evening. Hi, Chitra ma'am. How are you? Good, good. Tell me, dear. Okay. Now, when I came to the 8th grade, I came to the 8th grade. I came to the 8th grade the 4th grade. That is root matter. That is the problem. That is the problem. That is the 
ரெண்டு பல்லு டோட்டலா போச்சு பக்கத்துல இந்த சைடு ஒண்ணு அதர் சைடு ஒண்ணு கொஞ்சம் ப்ராப்ளம் ஆயிடுச்சு அப்புறம் அதுக்கு வந்து அந்த டைம்ல கொஞ்சம் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் எல்லாம் கொடுத்து ரூட் கெனால் பண்ணி அப்புறம் கொஞ்ச நாள் கழிச்சு இம்பிளான்டே பண்ணிட்டோம் அது ஒரு ஒன் இயர் ப்ராசஸ்ல இம்பிளான்ட் பண்ணி ஒரு டெம்பரவரியா இது பண்ணோம் அது ஒரு அஞ்சு வருஷத்துக்கு தான் வேலிடுன்னு சொல்லி எங்க டென்டிஸ்ட் டாக்டர் சொன்னாரு அதுக்கப்புறம் ஒரு மறுபடியும் ஒரு ஃபைவ் இயர்ஸ் கழிச்சு பர்மனண்டா வச்சுட்டோம் இப்ப அதுவும் கொஞ்சம் எனக்கு ப்ராப்ளமா இருக்குமா சில டைம் ஏதாவது சாப்பிட்டா வலிக்கிறது அப்படின்னு சொல்லி சொல்றா ஆஹ் இதுக்கு ஏதாவது பர்மனண்டா இப்ப ஒரு ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் இப்ப பண்ணினோம்னா இப்பனா அவ இப்ப கன் கன்வீனியன்டா ஃபீல் பண்றாளோ அந்த டைம்ல பண்ணா லைஃப் டைம் வந்து அது வந்து வேலிடா இருக்குமாமா so first thing is uh, shrinidhi ki vandu she's had a fall uh, fall irukkum bodhu enna irukku na pallu odanjirukku odanjirukku abingaram bodhu she's undergone root canal treatment and uh, maybe neenga sonnadhu vandu it means uh, post potu cap potirukanga ena implant potirundanga na it's a one uh, choice adhaadhu oru vaati treatment pannal podumanadhu root canal pannittu mun pallu abingaram bodhu kadikkiradhu shearing அதாவது கடிச்சு இழுக்கிற அந்த சாப்பாடு எல்லாம் ரொம்ப சாப்பிட கூடாது சோ இதுக்கு பெஸ்டா நான் வந்து கரெக்டான இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் சொல்லணும்னா ஐ டெஃபினெட்லி நீட் தி எக்ஸ்ரே ஆஃப் த பேஷண்ட் அண்ட் அவங்களோட யூனோ நேர்ல நான் இன்ஸ்பெக்ட் பண்ணினாதான் என்னால ஹண்ட்ரட் பெர்சன்ட் அவங்களுக்கு என்ன ப்ராப்ளம்ங்கிறது சொல்ல முடியும் nevertheless uh, yes uh, there are uh, treatments which are permanent treatments but generally uh, health uh, body abingaradhu uh, sollumbodhu naanga permanent abingaradhu solradhu romba use panna matom because nothing is permanent in this world illaya there is a lot of wear and tear so adanal ipothiki problem varadhu abingaradhu dhaan solluvom ena நாலு அளவுல வந்து ஹெல்த் வந்து டிடோரியேட் ஆகலாம் எந்த ஆர்கனும் டிடோரியேட் ஆகலாம் சோ அதனால நம்ம அப்படி சொல்றது கிடையாது பட் எஸ் லிட்டில் மோர் பெட்டர் சொல்யூஷன்ஸ் வேணும் அப்படிங்கறது யூ கேன் டெஃபினெட்லி கான்டாக்ட் அஸ் வி ஹாவ் வில் கிவ் யூ யுவர் ஆர் நம்பர் அண்ட் தென் யூ கேன் ரீச் அஸ் போட்டோகிராஃப்ஸ் எக்ஸ்ரேஸ் அண்ட் தர்சன் இன் பர்டிகுலர் வந்தீங்கன்னா தான் ஓகே நான் வந்து அவளுக்கு உங்க நம்பர் ஷேர் பண்ணிருக்கேன் அவளோ உங்க கன்வீனியன்ட்டையும் அவ கன்வீனியன்ட்டையும் பாட்டுன்னு கூப்பிடுவா உங்களுக்கு கூப்பிடும் போது இத பத்தியும் ஏன்னா நான் சொல்றதை விட அவ சொன்னா கரெக்டா பர்ஃபெக்டா சொல்லுவா ஏன்னா அந்த ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் எல்லாம் சிங்கிளா அவ மைசூர்ல படிக்கும் போது டாக்டர் பார்த்து பார்த்து ஒவ்வொரு வீக்கெண்ட்லயும் போய் பண்ணிட்டு வந்தது தான் அப்புறம் இங்க இருக்கும் போது பண்ணினதப்ப கொஞ்சம் டாக்டர் கூடிய இவர் கூட்டின்னு போனாரு ரூப் கேனால அப்பவும் கேப் போட்டப்பவும் அப்புறம் அந்த ஒரு இம்ப்ளான்டேஷன் அதுங்கும் போது மைசூர்ல அவ டாக்டர் சிவராமா ரமேஷ் பேரு சரியா ஞாபகம் இல்ல ஷீ வில் டெல் தோல் டீடைல் இன்னைக்கு டாபிக்ல ஏதாவது டவுட்ஸ் இருக்குன்னா நீங்க கண்டிப்பா கேளுங்க டவுட்ன்னு சொன்னா இப்ப அந்த வயசானதுக்கு அப்புறம் பல்லெல்லாம் கருப்பாயிடும் சொன்னீங்க இல்லையா ஒரு மாதிரி ஒரு பிளாக் கிஷ் ஆகி அந்த இடத்துல ஒரு கே ஒரு குழி மாதிரி விழுந்து அந்த மாதிரி இதாகும் போது அஹ் அதை எடுத்துட சொல்லுவாங்க இல்லைன்னா ஃபில்லப் பண்ண சொல்லுவாங்க அப்படி பண்ணினா மறுபடியும் அந்த ட்ரபிள் வராதா மறுபடியும் நான் ரிப்பீட் பண்றேன் மெடிக்கல் சயின்ஸ்ல நம்ம ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் பண்ணுவோம் பட் உங்களுக்கு வந்து குழிவு அந்த மாதிரி ஏதாவது இருந்து அந்த இடம் வந்து நம்ம ஃபில் பண்ணிட்டோம் அப்படிங்கறதுனா உங்களுக்கு ஹெல்த்தியா தான் இருக்குமே தவிர உங்களுக்கு இட் இஸ் வேர் அண்ட் டேர் இல்லையா சோ நான் இன்னும் பல்லே யூஸ் பண்ண போறது இல்ல அப்படிங்கறதுனா ஃபைன் இது வந்து ஒரு எக்ஸாம்பிளுக்கு சொல்லணும்னா ஒரு டயர் எடுத்துக்கலாம் சோ ஒரு வண்டி எல்லாம் அந்த டயர்ல பாத்தீங்கன்னா நிறைய அந்த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் புதுசா வாங்கின டயர்ல நிறைய அந்த வளைவு எல்லாம் இருக்கும் நாலு அளவுல அந்த டயரோட அந்த டயர் வந்து தேஞ்சு போயிடும் அந்த தேஞ்சு போயிடணும்னா அந்த குழிவு எல்லாம் நம்மளுக்கு கண்ணால பாக்குறது தெரியாது சோ அதுதான் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அதைதான் நான் சொல்ல வரேன் சோ நம்மளோட பல்லும் அதே மாதிரிதான் தேய்மானம் ஆக ஆக பில்லிங் ஒருவேளை வந்துருச்சுனாலும் இது வந்து யூ கேன் கோ அண்ட் கெட் இட் ட்ரீட்டட் பேக் சோ நான் எப்போதுமே சொல்லுவேன் ஒரு பைசா வசூலுங்கிற கேஸ் தான் சோ ஒரு பில்லிங் நம்ம ஆயிரம் ரூபாய்க்கே போட்டிருக்கோம்னாலும் ஒரு நாளைக்கு மூணு தடவை நான் பல்ல வச்சு நான் வந்து சாப்பிடுறேங்கிற போது ஒரு வருஷம் போதுமானது 
காஸ்ட் எஃபெக்டிவ்னஸ் தட் இஸ் ஹவு இட் இஸ் ரேதர் தென் டெல்லிங் எனக்கு இந்த ஃபில்லிங் மறுபடியும் தேவையா இருக்குமா அப்படிங்க அதாவது இது பல் பத்தி அதிகமா பல் வலிச்சா டாக்டர் கிட்ட போவோம் இன்ஜெக்ஷன் போடுவாங்க வாத்திரை தருவாங்க வந்துருவோம் இன்னைக்கு நிறைய விஷயம் இது பத்தி தெரிஞ்சுக்கிட்டேன் தேங்க்யூ தேங்க்யூ சோ மச்மா தேங்க்யூ சித்ரா தேங்க்யூ சோ மச் ரவி உங்களுக்கு ஏதாவது கேட்கணுமா இல்லம்மா இல்ல இல்ல எஸ் ரவி சார் ஆடியோ ஆன் பண்ணுங்க சார் ஒருங்க <laughs> on what occasion we used to do filling ipo and for example in my case la eduthinga enakku oru thadava pallu odanji adukapra vandu ungitta da vandu or accident la i lost my teeth neenga vandu panninga but normal course la filling of then it is to be done and then what are the implications of it? there are three reasons why filling can be done one vandu satta rendavathu suppose na vandu nadandirken valike vilundutten pallu odanjiruchu அந்த உடஞ்சிருச்சு அப்படிங்கறதுனா சின்ன உடை உடஞ்சல் அதாவது எனாமல் ஆர் எனாமல் அண்ட் டென்டின்ல மத்திரம் உடஞ்சிருக்குன்னா நான் பில்லிங் பண்ணினால் போறோம் அதுக்கும் தாண்டி போயிடுதுன்னா அது ரூட்கே நாளுக்கு தான் நான் போகணும் ஸோ ஐ வில் டாக் அபவுட் தேட் வென் ஐ டேக் அ ஸ்பெஷல் கிளா யூனோ செஷன் ஆன் யூனோ இன்ஜரிஸ் ஆஃப் த டீத் அப்படிங்கிறது அண்ட் மூணாவது அப்படிங்கறதுனா ரெண்டு பற்களுக்கு நடுப்புற இடைவேளை இருந்ததுன்னா அதுக்கு பேரு மிட் லைன் டைஸ்டமான்னு சொல்லுவோம் நிறைய பேருக்கு பாத்தீங்கன்னா ரெண்டு பற்கள் வந்து கொஞ்சம் தள்ளி இடைவேளையா இருக்கும் நடுப்புற அந்த இடைவேளைக்கு நடுப்புற நம்ம வந்து பில்லிங் மட்டும் பண்ணுவோம் சோ அந்த மூணு கேசஸ்ல பில்லிங் பண்றது அப்படிங்கறது சொல்லுவோம் சோ நம்ம வந்து சொத்தையா இருக்கணும் இல்ல ரெண்டு பல்லுக்கு நடுப்புற கேப் இருக்கணும் அண்ட் மூணாவது பாத்தீங்கன்னா பல்லு விழுந்து அதாவது நம்ம நடக்கிறத ஓடி விழுந்து அந்த பல்லுல ஏதாவது ஒரு சிப்பு விழுந்துருத்துன்னா நம்மளுக்கு அது ஷேப்ல தெரியும் அது ஷேப்ல டிஃபரன்ஸ் இருக்கும் பட் பல்லு வந்து ஒயிட் எல்லாம் இருக்கு ஒயிட் எல்லாம் உயிரோட்டம் இருக்கு அந்த பல்லுல அப்போதான் அந்த பில்லிங் பண்ண முடியும் உயிரோட்டம் இல்ல நின்னு போயிடுத்துன்னா அது ரூட் கேனாலுக்கு போயிடும் So, இன்னைக்கு நான் ரூட் கேனால் பத்தி பேசல பிகாஸ் அந்த டாபிக்கும் எடுத்துட்டோம்னா நிறைய நம்மளுக்கு வந்து பேச வேண்டியது ஓகே ஒன் மோர் கொஸ்டின் சாரி இது வந்து இந்த கிராசிங் பவுண்டரி போர்த் செஷன்ல வர்ற டாபிக் இல்ல ஜென்ரல் டாபிக் தான் இம்ப்ளாண்ட் வந்து இஸ் தேர் எனி லைஃப் கண்டிப்பா வி வில் டாக் அபவுட் இட் இந்த அதர் செஷன் சார் பிகாஸ் திஸ் செஷன் இஸ் ரெஸ்ட்ரிக்டட் ஃபார் டென்டல் கேரிஸ் இம்ப்ளாண்ட் வந்து அஃப்கோர்ஸ் இட் வில் சர்வ் யூ ஃபார் லைஃப் லாங் சோ லாங் இட் ஹேஸ் அ குட் போனஸ் டு இம்ப்ளாண்ட் கான்டாக்ட் ஐ ஹாவ் டு சே குட் பை டேக் கேர் அண்ட் எனி மோர் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் வில் டெஃபினெட்லி டேக் தெம் அதர்வைஸ் ஸோ ஹோப் யூ ஹேட் அ கிரேட் கிராசிங் பவுண்டரி செஷன் தேங்க் யூ சோ மச் and take yes, care yes yes wonderful thank session. you yeah, ma thank bye you. thank you bye 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 thank you vidya awesome thank session you, vidya thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you doctor thank you yeah